So we're coming from, from the other side of the very similar game that Jamie just described. Um, let's see. So first of all, yeah. See, it was flawless when Jamie did this, but it's not with me. Now it starts. So we, we are coming from 1,5 from a different perspective than the one that Jamie has just described. Um, we believe that there is a future pos possible where you literally can live on wind and sunlight forever for free. And in the end, it's just about, for us in our minds, it's just about connecting all flexible loads and everything that's electric could be a flexible load in general to wind and sun, because the primary energy of wind and sun is in the end for free. It's delivered free, it doesn't have to be mined, it doesn't have to be paid, we don't have to pay the Saudis, um, we don't have to pay anyone. Um, so it's just a question of how do we get wind and sunlight connected with all these different assets um, in a meaningful way. And of course, when we founded 1,5 two and a half years ago, um, uh, we also ask ourselves, like, what does it really need to get even one building into the area that it becomes CO2 ne neutral? So we stepped away and said, okay, we have the privilege of being four founders and just thinking about how can you scale something in six years to make any kind of difference. So, and, and we came up with the master plan, um, how to do that, and we had the freedom of not caring about any limitations. So we came up with this master plan in July 2021, um, and we wanted to basically live up to the claim of always providing the cheapest and cleanest power for everyone. And in the end, it's, in the end it's an ele electrification game, right? We need to electrify all heatings, we need to electrify all mobility, we need to electrify um, uh, all systems that are currently run by fossils. And we thought, okay, the first problem is, and it's very similar to Jamie, the first problem that we all know really well from our careers is the installers. So we, we thought, like, it's not possible whenever you come with technology into these markets, you get stuck in the mud. And the mud is that there is a last mile that is not optimized for the scale. It's not optimized, it's never been, it's nev not been designed to actually deliver within six, five, or even 10 or 20 years this kind of change. So it's not fit to do it. So you cannot overlook that. And we, t we try not to overlook it because most companies want to stay out of the mud. We decided we go into it and we decided we need full control. So what we're doing is um, we are acquiring companies we use those acquisitions to get in the market profitable, and then we take full control, because we think if you want to change something, you need vertical integration of the entire process. That's chapter one. Let's see how it goes. Chapter two of the master plan then is to say, okay, 50% um, of all cost in what we do is labor cost. Um, and we believe we can reduce that by more than 50%. To be honest, I think it's even more with AI coming in when it comes to service, quality management, and so on. There are so many processes, electrical planning, maintenance, warranty issues, but also uh, remote maintenance that you can apply. So, so there's a lot to do, and there is no, let's say, digital um, workbench, or I like to say virtual assembly line. So the second point is you need to decrease cost by 50% or more in order to make this even more affordable because the upfront investment needs to go down to scale. And then the third point is, or chapter is, if you are successful in one and two, this means you will be pushing into the grid thousands, even millions of decentralized systems. And there is no true marketplace for these systems because the problem is sun and wind, they are volatile, but our consumption is not. So we believe loads and consumption needs to follow the cheapest source of electricity, which is wind and sun. So we said, okay, remember four people in a basement, of course we have to create a marketplace that really can solve that problem, because otherwise you just create problems for everyone. The homeowner might be fine, but society would still have to pay two systems, because the redundant fossil system still needs to be there in check. Okay, so enough said, we started. Um, and <laughs> we started focusing on, on one, which is our buy and build. It is a buy, uh, buy strategy at the beginning, and it becomes a build strategy once we are in the market. So we are not planning on acqu uh, acquisitions anymore once we are established. And what we have already managed is that we also buy direct, but we also require API access with the manufacturers that we work with. 
What does it mean? It means that we, I mean, those of you who know tech know there are firmware updates, you need local APIs, backend APIs, and you need to have a clean access. So you need to know whether they do a firmware update, whether they change their IoT setup, because if you want to actually steer these systems in the rhythm to dynamic tariffs, in the rhythm to marketplaces like they had trading, they need to be very accurate. So we don't even bother with putting manufacturers in our portfolio that do not uplift to these higher standards. Yeah, and we're super proud also to have now um, have uh, convinced <laughs> Daikin to, to partner with us on that. And so we are already in a, in a status where we can deliver the one-stop shop. It is already API integrated, so maintenance, the app, it's all in one. Uh, we are also a utility, so um, that's working. And we just heard it, costs are coming down, and that's our main aim, right? Um, in the first milestone, we want to have at least 35% cost reduction. We are now at 30%, and this allows us to actually, and that's the wrong number, <laughs> okay, good one, um, that allows us to actually um, give a warranty on five cents per kilowatt hours of our solar system. So we are not se selling a saving, we are simply selling a generator that will provide CO2 neutral um, electricity for 30 years and we guarantee it for five cents though, right? In Germany it's about 30 to 40 cents right now. So we are there and we are also trying to create a household brand because we think it's time for a real brand. I think nobody here can name any main brands when it comes to solar um, uh, uh, manufacturers or even installers alike. So I think it's, it's, it's time to address this in a more consumer-friendly uh, manner. We do this with lots of showrooms. I'm going to spare you all the details, but we are at least on the way to try and actually execute that as well. So far, in our first step of the master plan, we have reached seven markets, 72 locations, close to 2,000 full-time employees. We have an R&D development center that helps us to actually test all of the stuff that we're doing. Um, we made 33 acquisitions um, in less than two years, um, and these companies all together, including new locations that we open ourselves, have installed 100,000 energy systems up to date. Now, chapter two. Chapter two is not about procurement. It's not about um, the brand. It's not about buy and build so much. It's about becoming a software company and building that virtual assembly line to actually improve the processes. Using software and AI that we control from the first touch point with the customer to the very last, which is indefinite, because these systems will be repowered. We have business in Australia. Most people with high income, they have repowered solar already after five years. And they also repowered batteries because they, um, they want to do it and they're already amortized. So it's an infinite journey, um, and we really want to be a partner for an infinite journey um, for our customers. And what does this mean? It means that we have to somehow align consultancy and sales processes, logistic, warehousing, technical planning, DCAC installation, plumbing, um, but also a reusable IoT setup at every building that we enter in order to get the perfect of everything, energy services, but also customer satisfaction, and all these technologies, they interdepend. Um, so you actually have to design a process where you constantly learn. So if everybody's, anyone is telling you they have a CRM system for a heat pump, I tell you, BS, because it's not been done yet, and we are all constantly learning, and we like to work on our own assembly line because we are continuously updating the software, because we are learning, we are not done yet. We, do, we go workstation by workstation. There are multiple synergies, I'm not going to talk about them, it takes too long. We have about 150 developers now, and they are going to get a home, and the home is going to be opened in April in, in Berlin. Um, uh, so that's the main site where we have our test labs, um, where we actually look at our own dynamic tariff that we host on our platform, our own energy market components, actually do work in real time with the assets that we are um, connecting. And then everybody could say, okay, um, if you do the assembly line well, that's already a strong case. Um, remember, Procurement prices down, process prices down, labor costs down, but we believe we can even create income from the assets that we are selling. And we think that if you are not capable of designing your solution in a way that you create income instantly, and also thinking of that potential value, you will be lost in a couple of years. Because people will learn that if they buy a heat pump now, and it's not compatible to anything, smart meter rollout, smart meter gateway regulation, energy services, they're going to have a horrible, horrible total cost of ownership and experience. So we believe they're going to be ecosystems that will provide the best service on top of that, 
and of course, you can already assume we want to be that ecosystem. Yeah? And um, so we are a utility. We operate our own balance circle management because you actually have to buy the electricity day ahead. You have to do forecasting. It's not that easy. And we've seen if you partner, it doesn't work the way we want it. And here it comes now from, from if you don't have a solar system from us, you can still use our dynamic pulse tariff. And every connected asset gets a guarantee of 15 cents, which is 60% below average pricing in Germany. Could be a heat pump, could be a war box. Um, so you don't, we don't even need the solar system. That's really important to extend this to everyone. All right, let's see. I'm going to skip this one because my time is over. So summarizing, we are now 72 locations. I said that 1,900 um, talents, 100,000 uh, installed energy systems. Really, really nice that we are getting close. Let's see how the snow is going or the weather on revenue recognition. But we hope to still hop into the 500 million in our full second year. And we have an unadjusted EBITDA of over 45 million um, this year. And we also just closed um, our first bank financing after two and a half years being bankable. Thank you for the banks, um, uh, which will allow us to decouple M&A from our tech stack. That's it. Thank you for your time. and. See you next time.